Hi, I'm Rajiv, and today I'm going to show you how to plant a jardiniere. I've been making flower pots with my pottery mentor, Guy Wolf, for a little over 10 years now. Here's something I made with him last year. This is called a Long Tom flower pot. And for all of the years that I've known Guy, he's been saying, one day you have to go to visit Impruneta. Impruneta is a tiny town just outside of Florence that has a very rich history of making terracotta flower pots. The potteries in Impruneta, they've been making clay tiles for roofs, they've been making flower pots and garden ornaments for many hundreds of years, and I couldn't help but bring back something from Impruneta. I loved two of these all the way from Italy back to my New York apartment. While I was walking around these beautiful historic potteries, I saw these wonderful urns that were so ornate all over the place. And I couldn't bring any back with me because they were quite big, but I did really feel inspired to come back home and try to make some. And they turned out quite well. They're what I call a jardiniere, which is a French word, but it's this kind of shape. So here it is right here. And it's like a bowl. It's like a shallow bowl with a pedestal. And I saw these all over Italy. I saw them in gardens. I saw versions made out of stone in museums. And because I had this inspiration to make one, I started really looking closely at everything in Italy. And I discovered that there are two pieces. There's a base and there's the bowl. And this fits into a projection on the top of the base. And that was kind of a game changer for me because when I was thinking about making this in one piece, it seemed almost impossible. And then when I realized I could make it in two pieces, it was very doable. So I've never made one of these before. I kind of had no idea how to make one. I decided I would throw the bowl part on the pottery wheel and then by hand I would add these segments all around the base of the bowl and around the rim. So that's what I did. I also threw a column shape for the pedestal and I stuck it onto a square base and then I added these ribs and I was so pleased with how they turned out that I ended up making four in total. So there's one, there's, here's another one. And then I, I also made a couple of plain ones. Here's a plain one with a plain base. And they just, when they came out of the kiln, I was just thrilled with them. They really reminded me of something that you might find in a really old garden that goes back three or 400 years, or maybe even in a cemetery all over Europe. There are these old cemeteries with beautiful limestone statues that have like this weathered effect where the rain has been trickling down the same channels for hundreds of years, creating dark spots. That's what I wanted to achieve with these jardiniers, and I feel like I got that. Today, I would love to show you how I plant one up. So I thought it would be really nice to plant this jardiniere with orchids. If you have something low like this, even a very shallow bowl or ceramic dish, orchids are a wonderful thing to group together to make a big arrangement. The other thing about using orchids is that they're, they'll last quite a long time. If you put the arrangement in a place that's out of direct sunlight and uh, you make sure that you don't overwater them because orchids do not like too much water, then this should last for at least a couple of weeks, if not a month or longer. So, 
I have this part of the jardiniere, which I've taken off the pedestal. I'm going to fill this with orchid bark. So orchid bark is a mix that you can get in a bag and you can get coarse orchid bark or fine orchid bark. Orchids are epiphytes. They, they don't grow in soil. They actually grow on trees or on um, dead logs and they pull moisture out of the air. So they, they don't want to be planted in soil. And if you're replanting the orchid from the pot that you bought it in, you need to get some orchid bark and put that in the new container. So that's what I'm gonna do here, like that. And before I add more, I'm gonna start actually arranging the orchids in here. So here I have orchids that are varying heights. I'm gonna put the tallest orchids in the middle and I'm gonna put the smaller orchids around the tall ones. This is what the roots look like if you pull the plant out of its plastic pot. It's just kind of bound around moss and you can very gently pry the roots open. You don't want to disturb them too much. Now, I'm just going to place this in the middle the first couple of plants are going to be the trickiest because they're going to be sitting by themselves. So they have to stand up on their own. Oh, so that, this tipping is what will probably happen when you're starting this, but as you add more orchids, they're going to support themselves. Okay, now, you don't just stick them in here. You want to look at the shape of the stems and the leaves and how they're going to sit with each other. So I think... That's good for these big ones. And it's also, I don't mind these roots like hanging off the side of the pot. Will they shrivel up and dry out? Maybe. But I think we could afford to lose a couple roots. Now we'll move on to the medium orchids. Lightly loosen the roots. They're just kind of tangled. So you can you can actually like one by one you can untangle them. This is a great thing to make for a centerpiece on a table, on a holiday table, or just like a centerpiece on your dining table that you'll leave there for quite a while. I was just so thrilled with how these jardiniers turned out. When I was making them, I had no expectations. And then when they came out of the kiln, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be able to use those. This is where you need like another set of hands. I don't have. I'm gonna let them fall over because I'll anchor it all in place at the end. <laughs> you actually have to step far away to look at this from a distance to assess where things need to go. When, when they're not falling over. Okay, let's see here. This I wanna move. And this should be fun. This should not be stressful. So if you're doing something like this and if you're stressing out, remind yourself you're supposed to be having fun. 
there. That looks very nice. It's gonna go over here. Face out. Once the orchids are just kind of roughly in place, you can anchor everything with more orchid bark. So I'm gonna get my orchid bark and just fill in the, the spaces to hold the plants in place. I had to step back to look at it and I think it looks really nice. And the final thing that I like to do this part is to get some sheet moss. And this sheet moss is dry sheet moss. It's dry sphagnum moss that you can very easily just rip apart and put over top. And I don't, I don't put it everywhere, but it's nice to put on the places that are sort of visible under the leaves. Ugh! It's so satisfying. It makes it look like the orchids are, are growing out of this woodland. I love when I get, get an idea to make something and I'm really excited about making that thing. And then I actually attempt to, to make it and it works because half the time I have an idea in my head and I try to make something and it's, it doesn't work or it's not as I expected it would be. But this, this jardinier thingy, it actually surpassed my expectations. And that's, that's always fun. Okay, that looks fantastic. Now, the last thing that I need to do is go in here and take off these hideous little hair clips that they put on the orchids when you buy them from the store. And I'm gonna just replace them with tiny bits of wire. And I'm just using floral wire. And you don't wanna do this too tightly because you want the stem to have some room to move. But this is just a thin piece of wire that's a little more subtle compared to these black hair clips. You could also use just a bit of jute or raffia. Raffia would actually be perfect because it's uh, thin and it's soft and it will go fairly unnoticed. There. I think that looks so much better than the clips. So, to maintain this, you want to put it in a place that's getting indirect sunlight. It should be oh, between 55 and 70 degrees. It shouldn't be near a radiator where there's extreme heat or cold. And I would water this once a week. I would take it over to the sink water it by the sink, let it drain, and then bring it back to where it lives. That looks so good! Sometimes I make things and I'm like, I can't believe I made this. <laughs> now comes the most exciting part. There's the base. This, it, it really looks like something that has been growing in here for at least 200 years. Every now and then, when you have the vision in your head and it works, it's a thrill. So my advice to you is always go for it. Always try. If you have the inspiration to make something, if you don't know how to make it, but you're just intrigued, maybe you saw something out there in the real world or you saw something in a book, just 
go for it. And even if it doesn't work out, usually it was fun trying. Maybe you spent some money that went down the drain, but the money was spent on the process. It was spent on the actual action. I am going to use this thing. I'm going to love this thing. I only made four. One was sent to an art patron who helped me out, helped me to go to, to Florence, actually. And I'm sending her the vase to thank her. She commented on it and said she loved it. And that's going to her as a thank you gift. My sister asked for one. She asked if she could buy one. I said, they're not for sale. But when your sister asks you for something, you got to give it to her. So one's going to her. And these two are going to stay in my Manhattan mini storage. <laughs> and they're going to get pulled out whenever there's a something that's worthy of a jardinier. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.